I'd like to just talk to you um, in an impromptu fashion about uh, Scotch malt whisky. Um, throughout uh, the throughout uh, Scotland, there are over a hundred distilleries, and each one are creating um, their own brand of whisky. Um, these are known as uh, single malt whiskies, and they come and they're derived from malted or derived from barley, a grain of barley, and go through the distillation process uh, where they are distilled at um, uh, over 80% volume and matured in casks for at least three years to enable for, for them to be considered as Scotch malt whisky or single malt. Um, now basically the region of Scotland you can divide it when it comes to malt whisky you can divide it into uh, say five regions um, you have the lowlands, uh, the highlands, Speyside, the islands and Isla. Now in the case of the lowlands you'll have uh, maybe only about three uh, distilleries and these are these are denoted by a very sort of lighter style of malt whisky where they are distilled uh, up to three three times to give that give a sort of lighter and gentler feel. Uh, such distilleries as Ockentoshan um, and Glen Kinchy, uh, which is very near Edinburgh, are famous in this region. Um, they are very light, as I've said, and can be um, consumed virtually well uh, very at uh, any time in the evening. Um, Going further up Scotland, you have the more uh, you have the Speyside whiskies, which are perhaps the most famous region. Here you have the malt, uh, you have the distilleries as such as Glen uh, as Glen Fiddick, Macallan, Glen Livet, um, and these are more denoted by their more uh, very delicate style, very uh, easy to easy again, easy to drink. Uh, the water up in Speyside is very pure. And very um, uh, a very sort of florid and fruity sort of flavour uh, to them, um, and I shall come back to them in just a moment. Uh, going on from that, you have the more the highlands, which are the central highlands of Scotland, northern highlands um, in particular, where you have more robust whiskies, which um, in a sense have a little bit of peatiness. Uh, to them, but uh, they are, there's not so many as uh, concentrated in Speyside, probably more because of the actual, the land that grows uh, barley in Speyside is, is superior to the rest of Scotland. Um, and going on from there you have the more uh, peated or smokier style whiskies. Um, now they're denoted from the islands or the Hebridean islands in particular or the Orkneys or the Isle of Skye. Um, and they have a smokiness to them, which um, is very, uh, it gives them sort of, it's derived from the peat that is grown or that is uh, on these particular islands. When you, uh, when you germinate the barley and dry it, uh, the peat is laid on the, the kiln and the smoke from the, uh, the peated, uh, from the kiln gives the barley its, uh, its smokier flavour. This in turn gives the influences the actual taste of the whisky later on. Um, going on from there, the final region is the uh, island of Isla, which has the most peatiest and most smokiest whiskies of the lot. Um, generally speaking, that's because Isla is uh, there's a lot of peat bog on Isla, and this is used to fire the kilns which dry the barley. Uh, notable uh, distilleries on Isla. A lag of woolen, Arbeg, Lafroig, Beaumont, um, and these are very uh, these are famous the world over now, and they've uh, created the the whisky or the Scotch malt whisky boom. Um, now coming back to Speyside, uh, today I have uh, a Speyside whisky which is very light, very gentle. It's uh, the water source is from the Pity Burn, uh, as I understand it, um, and this is. Um, in the, you could say, the northeast region of Scotland, which is one of the most concentrated regions of Scotland uh, for malt distilleries, is about 50 in, in, a, in a smallish area. And as I've said before, it's due to the, uh, the land and the tradition and the history and the water of that particular part of the, of the Spey Valley. 
Um, it's notable because it creates some of the lightest, most delicate, most florid whiskies uh, in the world. Um, and notable names are Glen Phillip, uh, McCallan, and Glen Livet. Um, and Spayburn is, is another example of them. Now, uh, on the back there, it says uh, there's spices, um, golden amber in colour, um, lemon and floral vanilla spice on those, and a wonderful balanced full-bodied whiskey and a long-lasting finish. Um, I'm just going to um, do a nosing of the whiskey. Now, there is a, a, a bit of a myth as to how to enjoy whiskey and how you should actually, uh, whether you should actually add any water or ice cubes to it. Um, generally speaking, you don't want to add ice cubes to a malt whiskey because that will interfere with the actual nosing and the actual aroma of it. But um, I'll just give this a quick uh, sniff. Mm. And yes, um, as the label says, there's definitely a, a feel of green apples on the, in, on the nosing of this particular whiskey. I haven't got any whiskey, uh, any water with me, unfortunately, but that, uh, that won't interfere with my enjoyment of it. Um, now, if you are to add water, then make sure it's mineral water or pure water. Don't add tap water. That will interfere again with the actual uh, palate or flavourings of, of the actual whiskey. Um, and uh, as I said before, no way should you add ice or any other uh, liquid. Certainly I've heard of people adding coke to malt whiskey, which is a complete waste of time. Because <laughs> it is, again, it totally destroys all characteristics of the flavour and the actual nosing of the actual, of the actual whiskey. So, they may say actually uh, in Scotland um, an invocation is slanch, for, um, which is like cheers in Scottish. So at this point I will say slanch. Mm. Delicate, spicy, um, perhaps a little tinge of green apples there um, on, on, the, on the finish. Generally speaking with um, malt whiskey, the initial um, flavour on the palate uh, will change um, as you go into the finish basically and, and some of the flavours characteristics will change as it goes into the finish. Um, perhaps not as strong a finish as I would uh, have liked in this. Normally in uh, smoky whiskies you'll get the smoke coming through um, on the finish but in particular on Highland Park. Um, which is an Orkney uh, distillery, but this is typical, very enjoyable, easy to drink style of um, Speyside malt whiskey. No smoke whatsoever, um, and perhaps just a little touch of vanilla there as well. Um, just a little other few notes. Um, basically, when whiskey is matured, it's matured in casks. Now, the casks are either from America, which is the bourbon cask, where they make bourbon whiskey over there, um, now, if a whiskey is made or matured in a bourbon, American, white oak cask, then it will take on characteristics normally of um, vanilla, uh, honey, um, and light floral, uh, uh, light fruitiness, um, maybe citrusy flavours. Um, the alternative to uh, maturing whiskey in bourbon cask is European oak cask, which have normally held sherry. Um, and now these are rarer um, because in America, once you use the cask, that's it, and you can't reuse it. So what happens is, is the American oak casks come over the come over from America and are used by the Scotch malt whisky industry. Um, but European oak casks are, f are much rarer and are much uh, used to really finish off the whisky after it's matured in, in a bourbon cask, maybe for ten years. Is often finished in a sherry oak cask to give it a gentler or a more distinctive, fruitier Christmas cake uh, flavour to it. And often you'll see now more and more whiskies are not aged because uh, there's been such a boom in malt whisky industry um, that um, you don't really have um, aged whiskies because they've all run out. <laughs> and these days they have selective casts um, with the um, with their bottlings. They, 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 
mature whiskey and then finish it off in a cask which is uh, sherry sherry would normally and under scotch whiskey rules association rules they have to advertise the youngest cask so basically they wouldn't say well scotch whiskey one year old because there's only the youngest cask is only one year old that it's matured in so normally they say sherry oak sherry would finish but they won't give the actual whiskey an actual age statement but, um, and as they've done here, basically, there is no age statement on this particular one. They've given it a, a, a Gaelic name, which is almost unpronounceable, but um, I think it's Brandon Oric. <laughs> but either way, um, I hope you've enjoyed just a small or short introduction to Scotch malt whiskey.